Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse 41. Jaya Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Balava Giri Jaya Gopi Jana Balava Giri Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Thira Banachari Yamuna Thira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Paribraja Kacharya Astotara Sata Shri Shri Madhesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada Ki Jaya Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jaya Nama Acharya Sila Haridas Thakur Ki Jaya Premsa Kaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jaya Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopagopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jaya Vrindavan Mathura Dham Ki Jaya Navadip Mayapur Dham Ki Jaya Jamuna Mai Ki Jaya Ganga Mai Ki Jaya Bhakti Devi Ki Jaya Tulsi Devi Ki Jaya Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jaya All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees Bhagavad Gita Chapter 6 Verse 41 Prap Priya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati shamaha suchinam srimatim gehe yoga brashto bijayate prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati samaha suchinam srimatam gehe yoga brashto bijayate Prapriya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati samaha suchinam srimatam gehe yoga brashto bijayate prapriya punya kritam lokan 
Ushitvashashvati Samaha Shuchinam Srimatam Gehe Yoga Brashto Bijayate Prapriya After achieving Punyakritam of those who perform pious activities Lokan planets Ushitva after dwelling Shashvati many Samaha years Suchinam of the pious Srimatim Srimatam of the prosperous Gehe in the houses of Yoga Brashta one who is fallen from the path of self realization Abhijayate takes his birth. Translation The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or in a family of rich aristocracy. The unsuccessful yogis are divided into two classes. One is fallen after very little progress and one is fallen after long practice of yoga. The yogi who falls after a short period of practice goes to the higher planets where pious living entities are allowed to enter. After prolonged life there, he is sent back again to this planet to take birth in the family of a righteous Brahmana Vaishnava or of aristocratic merchants. The real purpose of yoga practice is to achieve the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness. But those who do not persevere to such an extent and fail due to material allurements are allowed by the grace of the Lord to make full utilization of their material propensities. And after that, they are given opportunities to live prosperous lives in righteous or aristocratic families. Those who are born in such families may take advantage of the facilities and try to elevate themselves to full Krishna consciousness. Prapya Punya Kritam Lokan Ushidva Shashvati Samaha Suchinam Srimvatam Gehe Yoga Brashto Bijayate. This verse was often quoted by Srila Prabhupada because um, he himself was born in a family of righteous merchants. Of course, Prabhupada was not an unsuccessful yogi. Prabhupada was an eternal associate of Krishna. How do we know this? We know this because an eternal associate of Krishna, when he takes birth in this material world, he never forgets Krishna even for one moment. In other words, from his moment of birth he is Krishna conscious and Prabhupada was Krishna conscious right from the beginning. His father was a pure devotee. As a child he was strained in devotional service. But Many families like Prabhupada, rich aristocratic families, they are generally Vaishnavas in India. The uh, royal class, the Kshatriyas, the kings of India, and the mercantile class, the business class, were generally Vaishnavas. When I traveled in India in the late 70s, early 80s, I traveled far and wide in Bengal, Orissa, Bihar, all Eastern India. And we had no contacts. We didn't have many Indian devotees in Mayapur or in Calcutta. Most of the devotees were from the West. And uh, when I was traveling, I was going into unknown land. Nobody knew me. But in every village, every town that I came to, there was a temple, usually a temple of, of Hanuman, or a temple of Lakshmi Narayan. And these temples were managed by the uh, mercantile community from Rajasthan called the Marwaris. 
and they were vegetarians. They were very much surprised to see Vaishnavas from America and from Europe. They welcomed us with open arms. They would give us a place to stay, raw food to cook. They would arrange programs in their homes. And they were, in, the, in fact, they were devotees. But because of the incessant and, uh, and, and unrelenting propaganda and because of the policies of the political class, money became very, very important in those days. In other words, if you didn't have money, if you weren't materially successful, you were considered to be inferior. If you were living on a farm and working on a land, you were called a clod hopper. Clod means a bunch of mud. Hopper means to jump on it. So clod hopper. It was a very uh, uh, pejorative adjective applied to those who were working on the land. And those who lived in the cities, they were considered aristocrats. And this propaganda, especially out of America and Europe, was very, very powerful. Because the British ruled over India for several hundred years, the general Indian populace looked up to the British and they aspired to be like the British because the British were successful. But the British, their idea of success was to make money. In fact, India was, was, uh, was stripped of all their wealth and that wealth was taken to the United Kingdom. In Britain today, the English, they are fond of saying that at least we gave India the railways. But, you rascals, you didn't give the railways for the benefit of the Indians. You gave the railways so you could transport Indians' wealth to the ports of Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras and ship it to your own country. That's why you gave the railways. Never forget, in material life, the externals are very important. If you have a beautiful home, if you're beautiful in body, if your wife is beautiful, if you have many children, if you have money, then you're considered to be uh, worshipable in society. Doesn't matter how you got your money. In fact, if you go to England, all the beautiful country homes and estates were all built on money stolen from India and other parts of the world. Money taken on the backs of slaves, slave trading, and misery of other people. But nobody looks at that. They look at the external. Oh, the mansion, the country house, the title, Sri so-and-so or Lord so-and-so. And this is the material situation. So in India, it's the same system. Already by 1970, materialism was very, very, very much uh, top of the propaganda. You couldn't watch a television program or read a newspaper without feeling that if you didn't have money, you somehow weren't worthy. All the worthy people, all the, uh, all the, uh, uh, all the people that were we were mentioned in the newspapers, we were given time, we're all the rich people. How they made the money is not important. But spiritual life is the opposite. In spiritual life, it's not so important how much you do. No. What is important is, what is the consciousness behind what you do. Therefore, Krishna is called Bhavagrahi Janardhan. Krishna is Janardhan. He is the leader of all living entities. And he doesn't see what you do. He sees why you do it. Bhava grahi. He sees the bhav. He sees the mood behind. Therefore, uh, this Western capitalistic idea is goes flies against the uh, structure and the uh, and the. Uh, and the importance of spiritual life. So in this verse, Krishna is saying, it doesn't matter if you don't make too much progress externally. Even if you make a little internal process, that will stay with you. 
Krishna says, Neha Bikrama Nasho Asti. This endeavor will not be lost because it is an endeavor. When spiritual progress means to make a connection with Krishna in your heart. In the heart, there are two living entities. There is me, the owner of the body, and there is the witness, the super soul, sometimes known in Christian uh in Christian uh, uh, philosophy as the conscience, the little voice inside our heart. So the purpose of spiritual life is to connect with this consciousness in the heart. Krishna says that Ishvara, or the Supreme Controller, is in the heart of everyone. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam, Riddesh Arjuna Tishtati. Riddesh, in the, in the locality of the heart, Tishtati is situated. And spiritual love means Tam Aham Sharanam Gacha. To surrender to that living entity, to that Krishna within your heart. Sarva Bhavena Bharata. Under all circumstances. And the more you turn towards this friend in the heart, the more you make spiritual progress. And it is never lost. Because that condition of the heart determines who you are. You may make, there may be a nice external show, a beautiful home, a beautiful material success. But what is beyond the success is the important thing, not the success itself. And therefore, uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Ti Atrasadharma Charanam Bhujam Harer. That swadharma, or our real activity, our real duty, our real purpose of life, to understand our relationship with God, even if we practice it a little bit and then give it up, that will stay with us. Ko abadram, but one who does his material duties perfectly, and doesn't have any spiritual asset, what is the use? Because all the material duties that we perform, all the material success that we achieve, will be finished at the moment of death. I'm in this body now. I don't remember what I did in my previous lives. But obviously, I did some material activities. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in a material body. But they're all forgotten. What I have achieved in the past, or not achieved in the past, doesn't matter a, 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 a little bit now. Whereas, whatever spiritual advancement I've made in the past, that stays with me. And if I make some spiritual advancement, Krishna says, do it. It doesn't matter if you don't become perfect, because I will take care of you life after life. And one of the ways that Krishna takes care is that one is born in a situation where the spiritual life continues. If in this life you make 20% advancement, the next life you start with 21%. And trayate mahato bayat, that if you've actually made some real spiritual progress, not, not a pretentious spiritual program, not going to the temple or to the church or to the mosque to pray to use Krishna in your service, that is not spiritual progress. That is illusion. Krishna can never be used in your service. Neither can you ever use Krishna's property in your service without having to pay the price. Real spiritual life means that you surrender to God. That you turn away from the, the bird in your heart, the two birds in the heart, the bird who is the living entity who is eating the fruits from the tree. And sometimes the fruits are sweet and is enjoying and sometimes the fruits are bitter and he's suffering. And he's so absorbed in eating the fruits, he forgets that next to him, that is your, his best friend. And this best friend, he has only sweet fruit. And the purpose of life, the purpose of religion, the purpose of dharma, is to turn away from the fruits of the material world and surrender to Krishna. And Krishna be sure, will give you whatever you need. You will not lack for anything. So, if this surrendering process towards Krishna uh, 
if it is even a little bit, if you perform even a little bit, then that guarantees a human life. Because only in a human life are you able to understand and, and progress in your relationship with God. You have freedom of will. So this is called Trayate Mahato Bayat, that even if you make a little progress, you become free from the greatest fear. And the greatest fear is losing your human birth. You lose your human birth and you get an animal birth if you only live and perform animal propensities. What are the animal pro propensities? Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. And this is our present society in which we live. The whole plan is how to eat, how to defend, how to have sex life, and how to sleep nicely. And all the facilities around facilitation, facilitating these four activities. But you can sleep just as well in an animal body. In fact, the bears, they sleep the whole winter. Never mind eight hours. They get the whole winter to sleep. Three months. Mating, who can mate more than the, the birds and the bee, the birds? They can have sex multiple times an hour. Eating, who can eat more than a pig? He can eat anything. It doesn't discriminate. He, he's eating so much he becomes fat and fatter and fatter. And defending, every animal has a mechanism of defense. If we live for these four things, then we lose our human birth because the human body is required to make spiritual progress so if you dedicate some part of your life to make spiritual progress krishna guarantees that you will carry on the spiritual progress in your next life even let us suppose that even though uh suppose i'm a devotee and i make some spiritual progress but then i go and live in radakun and give up Srila Prabhupada and take instruction from the Radakun Babaji's and uh, commit offenses and I'll end up taking a birth as a monkey in Radakun. But that is only one birth. After that again your spiritual life is given to you. You never lose it. So the Swadharma Sharanam Bujam Marir Vajan Apatvo Tapatet Tato Yadi. Apatvo means that you haven't become perfect, that your bhajan, your spiritual practices, haven't become, haven't completely been, you haven't become to 100%. You're not completely reached perfection. Hmm? But there is no loss. Because as I said, what you do within the heart is what determines who you are. So, when we, when, the bird in the, the two birds in the heart, when the bird who is eating the fruits turns to Krishna, then Krishna provides him all he needs. For example, devotees also eat and non-devotees also eat. But the difference is when the devotees eat prasadam, they make spiritual progress. And every devotee knows that Krishna prasad has a special taste. You cannot explain it. You have to be a devotee to understand. Uh, Krishna says, Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavritaha. I am not manifested to everyone. I am hidden, Savritaha, by Yoga Maya, by the potency, by my internal potency that hides me. So, uh, Naham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavritaha mudayam nabi janati lokomama jana those who are mudas nabi janati they cannot know me so you cannot know the taste of krishna prasad unless krishna agrees to show it to you unless krishna ag agrees to eat it when you offer it to him and you cannot just krishna doesn't accept just anybody's offer Patram hmm? Pushpam Falam Toyam, he says, you offer me some water, some leaves, some fruit, some milk. Tadaham Bhakti Uparitam Ashnami. I eat it if it is off offered 
with bhakti, with devotion. And it is offered by a prayatatmanaha. A prayatatmanaha is someone who is pious, who is following religious principles, who is not engaged in satisfying the senses, but is using the senses for the purpose for which they were created, that means to satisfy the senses of Krishna. This is the process. So when you offer Krishna prasadam, Krishna accepts. There is a very nice example. Just before the war, the Mahabharata war between the Pandavas and the Kurus, there was an attempt to make peace. The Kurus, they controlled the kingdom. Duryodhan controlled the whole world practically was under his administration by the mercy of his father Dhritarashtra. And he would not give the Pandavas what to speak of half the kingdom. He wouldn't give him five villages. He wouldn't give them enough land you can stick a pen in. That's what he said. That intransigent he was. So there was going to be a war because there is no way that Akshatriya can can uh, can execute his duties in life without having some land and some kingdom to rule over. Kshatriyas are rulers. So before the war was declared, King Yudhisthira made one last attempt to make peace. And he sent Krishna as his ambassador to Hastinapura, to the capital city of the Kurus, to Duryodhan, to sue for peace. So when Duryodhan found out that Krishna is coming to my capital city to, as an ambassador, he thought, let me make a plan to bring Krishna on my side. Because Krishna was neutral. He, uh, he, uh, he had declared that he would not fight. So when Krishna was coming into Hastinapura, in every street corner, Duryodhana built beautiful arches, beautiful platform. He, he employed many brahmanas to chant Vedic hymns. There were, there were, the, the road was sprayed with perfume water. There were many elephants and the beautiful gates made with banana trees and mango leaves. So in this way, Krishna was welcomed. He was given a royal reception. And when he arrived, at the entrance of the city, Duryodhana sent his younger brother to Sasan to welcome Krishna. Duryodhana didn't come himself because Duryodhana was senior to Krishna, so he was the king. But he sent his brother to welcome Krishna. And when Krishna came into the royal assembly of Duryodhana, Duryodhana welcomed him, gave him a wonderful seat, gave him a warm reception. And then he said, come, I have prepared a, 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 a feast for you. Come and eat with us. Krishna refused. He wouldn't accept Duryodhana's food because Duryodhana was not a devotee. And Duryodhana became upset. He said, how? Why are you not accepting my food? But Krishna was so smart, so diplomatic, and he said, my dear Duryodhana, I have come as an ambassador. I have a duty to perform. When my duty is finished successfully, then I will eat with you. But until that time, I am not, I'm not prepared to eat with you. So in this way, he refused Duryodhana's food. He left the palace and he went to the house of his devotee Vidura. Vidura was one of the uncles of Duryodhana. But he was born from a Shudra mother, so he was not one of the princes. But he was living in Astinapura and he was a great devotee of Krishna. In fact, he was, an he was an empowered incarnation of Yamaraj. When Krishna came to Duryodhana's house, uh, to Vidura's house, Vidura unexpectedly, he didn't expect him to come and he had nothing ready. He only had some bananas and which he offered to Krishna. Krishna was very happy to eat those bananas, but he was not happy to eat the feast that Duryodhana prepared because Krishna only accepts food bhakti uparitam if it is offered in devotion. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, he explained why prasadam is so special to a devotee. He explained why a devotee knows the difference between Krishna Prasad and Bhog. It is because Krishna Prasad 
offered in devotion to Krishna. Krishna is it, Ashnami. He eats it with his eyes. Krishna's body is Angani Yasya, all his limbs. Sakalendriya Vrittimanti, Pashanti, Panti, Gayanti, Chiram, Jaganti. Krishna's body, Krishna's limbs are interchangeable. He can eat with his eyes, he can see with his ears, he can taste with his hands. Yet there is no restriction because Krishna's body is spiritual. So when a devotee offers, Krishna accepts the devotion. He accepts the devotion in the food. And he tastes it and the food remains there. But Mahaprabhu says that when Krishna tastes the boga offering, the taste, the, the, the remnants of his saliva are mixed with the offering. And that offering becomes the sweetest nectar. So this is the great secret of Krishna Prasad. So don't eat bhoga. Always offer your food to Krishna. Chant Krishna's names. Follow the principles. And you are guaranteed to make progress. And Krishna will take care of you life after life after life. Thank you very much. So we have some comments from Riven Cloud. Humble businesses, all glories to the assembled devotees, pranams. Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi, shortly back from a long tour of India, Haribo Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisance, Hare Krishna. Mandy Priya from England, Hare Krishna, good evening. So thank you very much for participating. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, feel free to post and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. We'll see you on Friday, sorry. Hare Krishna, thank you very much.